everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the medications that I use to treat anxiety. So since starting this channel, we've talked about many different medications that can be used to treat anxiety, and two of them are actual medications that I use personally. The first one is known as lorazepam, or Ativan, and the other one is known as clonazepam, or clonopin. Now these medications act in similar ways, however there are some differences between them which dictate why I would choose using one over the other. For my prescription of lorazepam, it's prescribed as 1 mg sublingually, which would be tablets that you place under your tongue, and this medication acts very fast. So if I was in a situation where I was at work and had a panic attack or started to suffer from severe anxiety, I could use one of these tablets to get out of that situation. Now clonazepam on the other hand is not sublingual, it's taken orally and swallowed whole and it takes a little bit more time to kick in. But the advantage of clonazepam is that it actually lasts longer than Ativan. So if I'm going through a time in my life where I'm experiencing consistent anxiety, this may be a good medication for me to prevent anxiety. Clonazepam is prescribed as 0.5 milligrams, one tablet in the morning and two tablets at bedtime. Now typically if somebody was going to use a medication to prevent anxiety, they may not use a benzodiazepine. They may use something like an SSRI, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which would be an antidepressant that can also be used to prevent anxiety, such as Ciprolex or Escitalopram. Unfortunately with myself, because I have a diagnosis of bipolar disorder, these types of medications are not suited well for me, as they may push me into mania. For me personally, treating anxiety is something that's still relatively new in my life. It's something that hasn't really been a part of my life throughout my teen years or my early adulthood. However, after being diagnosed with bipolar and having a couple episodes and then finally taking bipolar very seriously and accepting the diagnosis, I've had a lot of anxiety moving into the spring months which seem to be prevalent for mania. The classic symptoms I seem to experience are sweaty palms, sometimes I sweat from my forehead, I get a very heavy feeling in my chest and a rapid heart rate. Now when I experience these symptoms, there are some other things besides medications that I do typically try to try to calm down the anxiety. One of them is a breathing technique where you would breathe in through your nose for about four seconds and then slowly let the breath come out of your mouth again for four seconds. I would do this usually five or six times to try to calm that anxiety and see if I can get through that without using medication. If I'm going through a consistent phase in my life where I do have that consistent anxiety, I may try meditation as well, but I do find that sometimes when my anxiety is very bad in particular, I may increase my anxiety when I start to meditate because I'm kind of lost in my own thoughts and I focus on all the things that I'm anxious about, which for me typically would be preventing another manic episode from taking place. It's good to try measures besides medications, especially when using benzodiazepines such as lorazepam and clonazepam, just because you don't want to risk becoming addicted to these medications. So again, these are not medications that I use consistently throughout the year. It's just when I go through a rough patch of time where I have a lot of anxiety, that's typically when I would use them. And I would never use these medications together. Another thing that I find very beneficial with my anxiety is actually talking to a psychologist. See, when I have meetings with my psychologist, we can talk through my fears that I'm having, which are causing the anxiety in the first place. So for example, going through this phase now leading into springtime where I'm typically a little bit nervous about having a manic episode, she can rationally discuss with me why my fears may be a little bit overblown. We talked about the fact that I'm currently doing everything right to prevent a manic episode in that I'm taking my medication as prescribed. I'm making sure that if I don't get a good night's sleep, I medicate for the next few nights to ensure that I do get a good sleep because with bipolar, having a good sleep is what prevents manic episodes in the most part. I'm being very open with my friends and family about different things that I feel or if my thoughts are racing so they can all kind of keep their eye on me and see if things are starting to get out of control. Overall, it's just really good to have that rational conversation with the psychologist to just put things into perspective and not let that fear get overblown. Again, just to recap, before I take medication, it's always good to try a breathing technique or potentially try meditation. And then if I'm having a severe panic episode, I would typically use lorazepam, which would be sublingual. And that would act very fast to try to take down that, that panic episode or that anxiety attack. And then if I'm going through a month or a couple month period where I'm having consistent anxiety, that's when I would use the clonazepam, which would act longer throughout the day. And I would take it multiple times throughout the day, two tablets or one tablet in the morning and two tablets at bedtime. If you're curious to find out more about these two medications, that is lorazepam and clonazepam, I will link the uh, videos in the description of when I've covered these medications in the past. I've done about three 
uh, videos on lorazepam and two videos on clonazepam. So I'll link them all down below if you're interested in finding out more about those medications. And of course, remember that this video is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. Always talk to your physician about the best way to treat your own anxiety if you're experiencing it. All right, that's all we're going to talk about today with how I treat my anxiety. Um, if you want to help grow the channel, remember you can like the videos, you can share the videos, or subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, that's it for today. Take care.